Understanding Intermediate Accounting Statement of Cash Flows. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email and our phone number. And the source visit for this video, which is Wiley, one of the financial publishers, and a text that's been used in Intermediate Accounting a long time, Kiso and Wygant, is a great text. And that's the text we're using. I want to reiterate the three types of cash flows, dividing your cash activity into three areas. And I'm going to talk about the second two first, because I think those are easier to identify, and then whatever's left is considered the third category. So investing, anything you do with stuff, buying and selling stuff, equipment, vehicles, building, land, those kinds of things, that's what we call investing, both buying and selling those things. Financing, I've always started off with a comment that there's two ways to run, raise money to run your business, stock, which is selling equity or ownership, and debt. Raising funds and repaying those funds, we consider financing. If you identify those two cash activities, both sources and uses, ins and outs, Whatever is left over, we consider operating. So operating is paying payroll, buying inventory, collecting payments from clients. I'm going to flip over to a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet here. And this is the Levi Jeans Company. It's the, September it's the September activity. I'm going to get rid of the word income statement because we've got other activity there too. And we've got some journal entries. And I always tell students when we talk about journal entries, your first thought here at the top of the page in brown, did anything happen to cash? So if you're told activities like we have down the left-hand side here, one through six, and you need to set up some journal entries, the debits and credits on the right, your first thought should be, did anything happen to cash? Because more than half of the time, a transaction is going to involve a debit or credit to cash. Let's go through these. Sell 5,000 pairs of jeans for cash. Cash comes in the door, we have revenue. Issue stock, that is, sell somebody ownership in your company. Cash comes in the door. Common stock and equity account, we post to that account. We buy some stuff. We purchase a sewing machine for our factory. That's a fixed asset. Cash declines. We prepay some insurance. That's an asset because it's an expense we don't have to pay for later out of pocket. Prepaid insurance is an asset. It's a debit to increase it. Cash goes down. We pay a dividend on that common stock that we issued to a shareholder. Our equity is reduced. Cash goes out the door. And finally, we receive interest on an investment that we own, and I want to make that distinction. If we own stocks and bonds of other companies, that's an investment. It has nothing to do with financing. And in this case, we earn interest on a CD, a certificate of deposit issued by a bank, issued by somebody else other than our company. Cash came in the door. Interest income went out the door. We're now at a second Excel tab and I want to take what we saw on the prior page and I want to put those entries into T accounts and by putting them into T accounts we're going to end up with our statement of cash flows at the bottom. So on the left we have our six journal entries and again the reminder did anything happen to cash and on the right we have T accounts. Debits on the left, credits on the right, account titles at the top, I've put the accounts that relate to the balance sheet on the left, the income statement accounts on the right. And then what we do is we take these, these six different activities, things that happen in our business, and we plug them into the statement of cash flows template that you saw in the cash flow one discussion. So. Let's start with investing and financing, and then we'll do operating last. We received interest on an investment that we own, cash in the door of 700. It's an investing activity. We had two things that happened that affected financing. First, we issued some stock, 
which means cash came in the door, cash increased. We paid a dividend, which meant cash decreased. Those are our two things that related to financing. The other three transactions related to operating our day-to-day -day operations. We sold some jeans, we got some cash. Purchased a sewing machine, cash went out the door. Had some prepaid insurance, cash went out the door. When we add up the ins and outs of cash, we have a change in cash of 42200 I'm assuming we had no cash at the beginning of the year, which meant when you add the change plus the zero beginning to balance, you end up with cash at the end of the year. And that should agree to your balance sheet. You should always use your balance sheet, ending balance in cash, as a check figure. So we have journal entries on the left. We have the T account impact on the right. And then we can agree those things into our cash flow document at the bottom. If you'd like to pause or rewind the tape, you can always look at those schedules and trace those transactions yourself. I'm going to flip back to PowerPoint because I want to go back to a comment I made br very briefly on cash flow one. The difference between current and non-current assets. Current assets are considered cash or something you're going to exchange into cash within the next year. So I'm, I call it cash or close to cash. And I'm going to use the year and I'm going to ignore operating cycle being longer than a year. Let's just stick with the calendar year. So in addition to cash, two big things you hope to turn into cash within a year. Receivables. You're going to collect money from clients within a year. If you don't, it's probably not collectible and should be written off as a bad debt expense. Second, you're probably going to sell your inventory within a year. Very few businesses carry inventory for more than a year. Maybe if you're manufacturing something really huge like a building, you're manufacturing planes, something large and very complicated, it might be longer than a year. But generally, receivables and inventory, you're going to convert to cash within a year. Another point that I always make is that if you want to find where your cash is tied up, it's probably tied up in receivables and inventory largely. Non-current assets are those assets that won't be cash or won't affect cash for more than a year. Your fixed assets, your trucks, your buildings, your land, your equipment, you're not going to sell. You're going to use them in your business. Long-term debt, you won't have cash going out the door for a year or more. And your equity, you're not going to pay back. You're not going to pay off the shareholder and take back the equity for a year or more. So those are non-current assets. That's the end of part two. You'll find part three on YouTube soon. Here's my YouTube channel for live tutoring and one-on-one -on -one chat sessions. You can go to our website, stltest.net. You can also email or phone for live one-on-one -on -one tutoring using gotomeeting.com. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.